So you decided you're making that move to France, but how do you go about it? And what are the best steps to follow? This video is the third video of three talking about the actual buying process. The first video is about the preparation. The second one is about the actual visits. And then there's this one here. So let's go. So you found the property of your dreams. You've made the offer, the offer's been accepted. And where do we go now? When you've actually made an offer on a property in France and that's been accepted, the next step is to go to either a company de vente or a promise de vente. I won't baffle you with the actual complexities of the difference between the two, because, well, basically that merits a video on its own. Might do that one day. Before preparing the actual initial contract, they will actually have to make sure all the diagnostics are done on the house. When a house is put on the market, we just do the DPE. Some vendors will actually do the full package then and there, so are ready to move forward. Others will wait till we get the buyer. So if they're waiting to get the buyer, we need to get a diagnostica in who actually do the different surveys and send the reports through to us so you, we can then move forward and prepare the documents for you. That can take five to 10 days, depending on the availability of the local diagnostickers. The agent will also need to compile a file about you. The agent will need from you copies of your passport, of your visa if you have one, of your birth certificate, marriage certificate and eventual divorce certificates. In France all these certificates are bundled up into one little booklet so it's so much easier than French. But unfortunately it's not the case for the British. Once the diagnostics are done and the agent has all the necessary paperwork from you and the vendors, Certain agencies will draw up the initial agreement themselves, others will pass it on to the notary to do so. So between the offer being agreed and the signing of the initial contract, often this can take two to three weeks. This is why we do the formal offer letter, which the vendors countersign because it blocks the sale at the time we get the file prepared. Concerning notaries, standard practice is to use the vendors notary saying that there is no reason or anything against you using your own notary to represent you yourselves. Doesn't cost you any more either. Basically, when a second notary is called in onto a file, the two notaries split their fees between them. Let's say the vendor's notary doesn't speak English and you know an English speaking notary you would like to represent you at the sale, then there is no problem with that at all. Do let the agents know from the offset though, because they need to put it into the initial agreement. More and more notaries are asking for your certificates to be officially translated. This needs to be done by a court registered translator here in France. There's quite a few of them around. Best thing is to ask your agent who they work with, who's quick and reliable. This will add an additional cost to the purchase, depending on the number of certificates, etc. but I'd say between 200 and 500 euros on top. Whilst on the subject of translators, if you're not comfortable with the French language, especially in legal situations like this, it'd be well worth talking to an interpreter to get them to come in and help with the file. This can be done basically one of two ways. One, by sending the actual documents off to them and they will officially translate them, and the second one is to actually come down and act as interpreter at the day of signing for you. Obviously, prices depend on what you want them to do, so discuss that with them. If your trip over to find a house was a short one and you've now gone back to your home, the actual compromise can be done by electronic signature or by procuration. That all depends on the agency or the notary. Certain agencies and notaries, once again, are getting stricter and stricter on the laws. And if signing with a procuration, will ask you to get that officially witnessed. Certain notaries will ask for it to be done by a notaire public in your home country. Others will just ask for someone with an official stamp. Others will just take your signing as it is. That's down to each notary to decide how they wish to work that. Once initial contract is signed, you'll need to transfer over the deposits. This can be a maximum of 10% of the net sales price. It can be less. That deposit goes into a safe holding account, nine times out of 10 with the notary, but sometimes it can be with the agent. Then after that, that is held there until the sale is completed and it's deducted from the actual total price. If for whatever reason you decide to put out the sale for a clause which isn't stipulated in the sale, that deposit goes to the vendor as damages. If on the other hand the vendor decides to pull out, although we don't actually take a physical 10% deposit off him at the time of the initial agreement, he will owe you 10% in damages. This is partly to stop gazumping in France. 
If you're actually having a mortgage or a loan to purchase a property, you'll need to actually transfer a copy of that company to the bank or the financial advisor so they can actually set up the deal for you. There is a time limit to have that deal set up. Uh, most times it's a month maximum, but the bankers will know all about that. But basically, as soon as you actually had the official acceptance from the actual bank or financial organisation, you will need to inform the agent to cover that clause and make sure we can move forward safely. Once all that's done, it's the waiting game. Uh, in France, it's very much a case of no news is good news. Um, the actual notary will be moving forward on the file, verifying all the different clauses, making sure there's no problem with the house, doing all the local searches, etc. etc. The normal time period in France for the sale to actually go through is three to four months. But you won't actually hear anything from the notary until probably, let's say, two weeks before the actual finance signing. At this point, you'll need to actually organise in transferring the rest of the funds for the actual purchase. Also, take into account tax foncière. The, in a sale, the tax foncière is 99% of the time is not included in the sale agreement, but is paid on the day of signing on a pro rata basis. So, what most UK based clients do is actually transfer that on, along with the actual rest of the funds, then the actual notary will dispatch it afterwards. And one last thing you need to sort out for the actual day of signing is house insurance. Normally speaking, the notary won't sign over the house if you don't have a minimal third party house insurance with an attestation to prove it to him. If for whatever reason you can't be present at the notaries for the day of signing, which they've announced to you in two weeks prior, obviously as soon as you know you can't be present, you need to inform the notary so they can actually prepare another course of action. One is sorting out a power attorney, which might need to be witnessed. Another one is actually more and more notaries are geared up to video signings and, and electronic signings, so they can do it over distance. If they are going for a video signing or electronic signing, do make sure that you actually have your phone handy at the time, because nine times out of 10, they'll send you through some sort of code to confirm it when you actually sign. Once all that is sorted, it's a big day. If you're signing at notaries on, on site and you haven't actually met the notary uh, so far, don't forget to take some ID with you. You will no doubt want to check your identity before you actually sign the house off. If you're actually doing a sign-in by proxy, well, there's not a lot to do. You, hopefully at some point you'll get an email from the notary saying you now own the house. And one last point, the notary is an official tax collector as well. So don't worry about contacting the actual local council to sign up for council taxes, etc., etc. The notary will take care of all of that and your tax bill will come through in due time. So there you have it, the actual process of buying a house in France. Obviously these are all just basic guidelines. As mentioned before, there's too many variants to actually make a short film about it and go into detail about every different factor. But if you did find this helpful and interesting, don't forget to click the like button and while you're at it, hit that subscribe and bell as well. See you soon.